Dude. Oh my gosh. This this gives me chills, you know? <laughs> These drawings. Oh. And then the table of contents is oh, just outstanding. To me, the best. The best. Why? No way. Ah, so good. Welcome to a new episode of Portfolio Review. In this video, we're gonna analyze four portfolios and in two of them, we're also gonna redesign a couple of spreads. If you wanna get inspired and learn more about architectural portfolios, stick around. I'm here with my co-host and fellow architect, Steven from Show You Better. Hey everyone, there are a lot of interesting insights during this episode. This video and the entire season are sponsored by Issue, the all-in-one platform for publishing and sharing your work. If you're tired of sending out clunky PDFs to showcase your portfolio, Issue is exactly what you're looking for. Issue is incredibly easy to use, you can upload your portfolio with just a few clicks and you get a single custom link that makes it easy to share your work with other people. Not to mention that your portfolio gets that page flip effect that adds a unique touch to the viewing experience. Yep, it's a complete package. There's a link in the video description for you to get started on issue. We'll talk more about it during the video and I'll teach you how to upload your portfolio. On another note, if you're interested in submitting your portfolio for a future episode, there's a form in the video description as well. Only issue links are accepted. It's easier for us to review your work and then share it here on the videos. In case you missed any of our previous episodes, just head to the comment section below and you'll find a playlist with all of our previous portfolio reviews. And lastly, here at Upstairs, we have a premium course teaching you everything you need to know about portfolios. I'll leave a link up here and in the video description in case you want to check it out. All right then, let's jump right into it. All right, let's get into the four portfolios we have to reveal today. I'm really excited to look at them, Steven. Yeah, for sure. Let's start. So this is the portfolio by Filip Popovic, which is a portfolio we really liked. Yeah, and we're going to start off with the cover, obviously, and right off the bat. And I guess I, I tend to say this a lot, but this is one of my favorite covers so far <laughs> from all of the hundreds and hundreds of portfolio that we review. I don't know what's, what's about it, but it's just the, the simplicity and the, the little patterns repeating and the, the numbers within it. I don't know, man. It's, it's he caught me. Yeah, you tend to see uh, a lot of abstract covers in the portfolios, but since each one is each is very different, then it makes it kind of like personalized or it has like a very specific touch to it. So yeah, I think this one with the font and the the information below, it goes really well. All right, so then the portfolio goes off into a CV. I really like how it looks and how he uses you know like a lowercase lowercase is in his in his headers like so it just gives it a different touch to it you know and then the table of contents follows a similar uh, style and uh, personally i think this is key to achieving a cohesive portfolio maintaining a consistency even within the small details even within the, the small decisions is it text is it description text keep it consistent and you will have a much higher chance of achieving in an outstanding portfolio and then Philip starts his, his first project with a very interesting project opening with a clear title. He's also using uh, bold on some of the inner titles there, which I kind of would like even to see this this approach over the the CV, just because it, it's here yeah. and it could have been there as well. By the way, there's a link in the video description if you want to submit your portfolio for a future episode. What I like about this project spread is that it's divided in objectives and learning outcomes, which is something that you don't see very often when you have project descriptions. You know, so it's it's very clear onto what each paragraph is saying and it doesn't have a vast amount of text. Just so it doesn't it just has a small paragraph that anyone can read in less than, you know, a minute. And I like the portfolios that the ones that that create the contrast within the page that provides visual and technical information so that you can take a little bit of each and can fill the whole spread without being overwhelmed about from one single type of information, you know? Yeah, there are, there are people who just include renders, people who just include uh, technical details, but if you just balance out both of them, it just makes a, makes you look like more like of a complete architect with different sets of skills. Oh, this is, this is super dope, come on. The image uh, alone by itself is just so powerful. Maybe I would have even started with this image, you know, I think it's much more powerful than oh, the you mean you mean on the second page. Yeah. Okay. So then the, the portfolio continues and it has 39 pages and he opens a new project, 
again, with the same consistent project opening, maintaining that in, that subtitle within the body text. And I think one common question that you or, or that one makes when starting to create a portfolio in each project spread is that for each project, you have a ton of information from, you know, the references, from the history of the site to the actual design inspiration, et cetera. You have like a ton of paragraphs. But when you try to condense this and synthesize this into just two paragraphs, it's uh, it's challenging, right? So maybe one of the things that you should question yourself or try try to do is try to group them in course, typology, location, inspiration, or concept, or try to uh, put the basic information of the project, like where it's located, uh, how you know who was it def- designed for, and in what time span or the typology. And that would be the most synthesized way of, of uh, explaining the project to someone who hasn't seen it yet. That's an interesting exercise to make. Wow. Wow. <laughs> this looks really cool. That, that uh, site plan with the shadows, oof, so powerful, man. He's got some mad skills, for sure. And then we have a, a new project. This is an honorable mention, fourth place. I love those floor plans. I think here is like the perfect contrast that we try to find, right? Of this very clean floor plan, but that still has a ton of information and versus like a, a detailed render of the inside. I, I love it. Dude. Oh my gosh. This this gives me chills, you know? <laughs> These drawings. Oh, some, you know, in some cases, uh, some renders give you chills, but these specific drawings these with detailed with the rocks it's, they're just so good so good that you're like you just want to keep looking at each detail and you could print them print them out like in, in a very big scale and they would still look good yeah you could this was probably done in what illustrator because it, it doesn't get exported from revit or archicad like this All right well depending on the tile that you wrote out for it? Yeah, I think Illustrator would be the easiest option, but I know, you know, uh, there's a lot of uh, old school architects that have like AutoCAD. They use AutoCAD like the palm no of their hand. Way. And they can do all of that. And they have a ton of blocks, a ton of libraries, so they can do all of that with only AutoCAD. I mean, I know that, for example, this, uh, this Japanese office, Atelier Bow Wow, they can do all this. Oh, they only work in AutoCAD, you know? Now, this is a new oh. project, right? But the contrast, you know, what we were talking about before. Yeah. Like just a very, um, a very white page before with only sections, with only technical details. And then here you have a very, like a completely different image that's just more like a, like a piece of artwork in itself, you know? <laughs> it has a ton of things inside. And I think a black background can work in situations like this. Yeah, I wouldn't make the entire portfolio black background, but if you want to break up the pace, if you want to create a very strict point of interest here, like, wait, pause, wait a minute, look at this, then you, you take it on and then you move move on with the rest of the portfolio. And it definitely feels like that. Yeah, we, we, we've seen some portfolios that use black or use solid colors and they don't look very good because they just use it all over the place. But here, just in very specific places, I think that's it's it's the perfect touch, you know. And because the the render itself made sense with the with the black background. Totally, totally. Yeah. Overall, outstanding portfolio. This is a good source of inspiration, as we always say during all of the portfolio reviews. And every time we talk about portfolios, take on this as references, inspiration. Again, what worked for them might not work directly to your work. You always got to be a translation from what you have in your assets, what you have in your library of, of uh, projects, drawings, and images, and then translate it into a portfolio version. You got to take the decisions that make sense for you and not just straight copy someone. All of this makes sense because the drawings and images, they are in such a way that makes sense in, in, in this way. Yeah. And ask yourself, what is, what is your visual style? You know, what do you have to say visually? that accommodates to your projects. Yeah, I totally agree. All right, so let's go to the next portfolio. This is from Tomiris, and this is a portfolio. We also did some redesigns, right, Steven? Yeah, we, we, we thought it would be cool to grab some spreads and give our own interpretation of the spreads, 
but that doesn't mean that we that the portfolio isn't good as it is because we thought this is a very unique and particular portfolio that maybe if you put it in a sea of different of five to ten different portfolios this one would stand out particularly because of the design of the graphic design that Tamiris uh, put in her in her portfolio so I'm very excited to see your your interpretations of the spreads and see what what we if the thought process was more or less the same so as you're going to see this is a portfolio that is a little, a little bit extra it goes it goes out of the uh, simple minimal portfolio that we usually see it has lots of identity and it shows a specific color palette that it's the obvious that you see and also use a lot of design elements that it's also hard to pull off i've seen people use it in exaggeration and it doesn't work out or in, in situations that yeah, don't make sense. And here, this is a good example on how to do it. It starts off with the CV, which personally, I think it's too much. It has a lot of good points. I don't know how to say, but it could be dialed down a little bit. You know what I really liked? I really liked the font that she chose throughout the yeah. whole, por whole portfolio. I think it's a, a very, a font that you don't see as much in portfolios because people are, you know, they want to play it safe. So this is a very risky font, but all of the squares and triangles and all of the lines just occupy a lot of visual space for me and i would want a little bit more breathing room around and i think this could be adjusted within her own style it could be adjusted a little bit so it can look uh, a little bit less dense the table of contents also follows the same format which makes total sense now she has a different sort of um flow here with the project opening as a cover of the project and then it starts off with the with the project i think the color here is is interesting it's way out there but it's interesting it's not it's not bad but I, i'm not so sure about like emphasizing the color palette once again you know it's already very visible and then you all here you have a bunch of squares that they add unnecessary noise honestly it's it's a very strong color choice but I was really glad to see that it was consistent through the portfolio design at the beginning and through her actual products because sometimes you see like a very weird design uh, in the first three pages and then the actual projects are very generic or traditional or they don't compaginate very well with the actual design. So here you can see that she likes to use color in her projects. She likes to be very bold with her decisions. So I think... I mean, it's not for everyone, but it's, it speaks a lot about her intentions with design and graphic design, you know? Yep. If you're making that cohesive throughout the whole portfolio, then it makes sense. Again, there's no right or wrong. It's just your style and the choices you made make sense. I think what what's missing here or not that's missing, what could be improved overall is some alignments, white space composition, you know, yeah. if it, sometimes if it feels too spaced out. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it looks like in some spreads, it looks really well designed and some look like she dreads, she just dragged the images on top without uh, taking into account margins and, and you know, grids. Oh, I love this. Yeah, this is really good. Yes. And I love the fact that she maintained the color palette. And personally, I think here it fits so much better. Not that it didn't fit before, but it it makes mo more sense here because yeah. it's a little bit subtle than the this first one. I don't know. Yeah, that maybe, one was too much. Maybe maybe the yeah. complementary information could be dialed down so that the colorful one uh, might might be highlighted as it is, which is what happens here. Like every it has a lot more white space. The text is more minimal, and then the collages are powerful and colorful and and bold and. And it makes sense. There's the space for that. All right. So the second project, again, follows that consistent project opening. Yeah. I mean, if we start to to deconstruct much more of these project introdu introduction pages, I mean, she has a really uh, concise typography, color, style. It's it's so specific that maybe for some it's too much on the eye. So what I would try to do is try to simplify each text. So when we have the project introduction, we see that we have a lot of text that is just really blocky. And then we have three or I think four different sizes of text. So we have the header, we have this the, the first phrase, then we have the information about the location, and then we have the paragraph 
text. So that's four different sizes, which could be reduced to two or maybe three, you know? Yeah. So it doesn't look like so varied in between each other. All right. So let's take a look at the before and after of the spread rate designs that we did. For sure. Let's look. I love the, this, this map analysis here. And I think the colors make a lot of sense, but somehow it felt like this was a PowerPoint that didn't have much thought behind it. It was just part of the presentation she had on and okay. just threw in the, in the portfolio. So I wanted to give more of a, of a, of a portfolio feel, a, a page with page, a spread type of design. So this is the before and this is the after. Oh man. So what I did was I made the legend smaller, kind of allocated that on, on the blank space. I took off the, the title and made it an actual title. And since there were no uh, description text here, which could be in place, especially because the, the, the past page here had a lot of text that she could break down into two spreads so that yeah. to divide and make it more manageable. So I added there and also aligned the graphics scale also to the left here. What do you think? <laughs> no, I think I think it looks much more balanced out. And obviously the the paragraph text just puts some weight on the on what is not part of the, the, the master plan image. Very on point all the corrections. So let's go to the second spread redesign. This is one this is the one that I wanted to do. It's a project opening from one of these incredible collages that she has. But as you mentioned exactly, it had too many of these tiers of information, the title, then the subtitle, then the description title, and then the body text. On top of that, there's the color palette that personally, I think that's redundant and it adds more distraction to what was supposed to be focused on the project. So this is the before and this is the after. Uh... Again, I just, cleaned it up and remove a bit of the unnecessary information. And I even went ahead and did a couple of iterations, you know, just removing a bit of the line, you know, if you want to keep the line or removing it entirely. Wow. So much better. I mean, this is a complete difference without changing the style of Tomidis's, uh, you know, overall design layout, right? I mean, it maintains the strong typography, the strong colors, but it just gives it a little bit more organization with the paragraphs and the text and the line, which I think is spot on. Thanks, man. But I'm excited to see your take on this, man. <laughs> so I mostly wanted to tidy up the CV, which I thought was very hard to look at as we were talking about. Her picture was, was too big and this block of text was also too wide. All of these squares had so much attention, you know, it just rested attention from the, her actual work experience and her actual education, which I think is maybe more important in some cases. So I try to, you know, reduce the space. So if, if we go back Ooh, yeah. to the before, I made the picture much, much smaller, erased some lines and made this paragraph much smaller. So here we have the same experience. Uh, I made the font a little bit smaller, the education, the languages, for the software, as we talked about in previous episodes, or what I recommend is that you only put the software that you are sure you can manage, right? But if you have like one square of something, then maybe you don't necessarily know that program as much as you would like to. So, and to finalize, I also wanted to give some sense to the actual lines. So if you see here, you see some vertical and horizontal, uh, you know, uh, pink and blue lines, but that didn't really make sense. But here, I'm only using the vertical lines as the blue lines, and then the rest could be the, the pink lines. And the pink line kind of like emerges from her photo, and she's actually looking at, <laughs> this is all very conceptual, but she's looking <laughs> at, she's looking at the rest of her education, like saying like, hey, look at look where I studied, <laughs> look at where I worked, which I don't know, I just <laughs> made it look a little bit more interesting. Yeah, you just simplified a bunch of things and uh, and kind of separated the, the information into their own space, which wasn't before. Yeah, awesome.
Okay, pause. Before we take a look at the rest of the portfolios, we're going to take a quick break to talk about our sponsor issue. Sponsors like these help us maintain these videos so that we can keep creating free content on YouTube. So thank you for all the support. So as we mentioned, sending out your portfolio as heavy PDFs to people isn't the way to go. There are too many variables of this viewing experience that you can't control. This is why we're so happy to be partnered up with Issue. It's the all-in-one platform for publishing and sharing your work, applying for a new job or a master's program, sharing your work with friends and colleagues, or just documenting your process. Issue makes it all possible with just a few clicks. It couldn't be easier to be honest. Personally, the best part is that you get a customizable single link to send out and as you saw, that so desired page flip effect. It's widely used by our industry that there's even a plugin that goes directly into Adobe InDesign, integrating and making it even easier to export your documents and portfolios. Issue is complete. It also gives you extra tools to help you turn your portfolio into a social media post, adapting your existing content to different formats, and it also tracks your work's reach and performance with robust analytics. The process to create an account and upload your work is quite easy. I'm going to hand it off to Oliver so that he can show you the steps. Okay, let me show you around issue. Okay, up here, click on sign up. And first of all, I need to address this. Issue has a free version. There are extra tools and features that are definitely worth the upgrade. But to get started, a free account will fulfill all of your basic needs as an architecture student. So then click on get started and input all of your info. Then once you're logged in, either drag and drop or click upload to pick your document. Or also, if you have the issue plugin installed on your Adobe InDesign, you can do it directly from the program. Just make sure that you have an account connected to issue on your browser. You'll be prompted to pick all of the settings as you normally would doing it through your browser. The key thing here is that your document name will be your custom URL. So name it something useful like your name or your current portfolio goal. Add a description and play with the settings. Issue offers a range of customization options, so take advantage of all of that. Publish your portfolio and then share it with the world. As I said earlier, there are a ton of metrics you can get from your portfolio, so head over to the statistics tab to get all of that data. You can see how your portfolio is performing, who is viewing it, and where they are coming from. Head over to the first link in the video description to get started on issue and use my coupon to get an exclusive deal when upgrading to a premium plan. Thanks issue for sponsoring this series and now let's get back to reviewing portfolios. Okay, so the third portfolio is from Veronica Salguero and this is a personal portfolio of hers. Maybe just like before, she has a very unique and distinctive style and it's consistent throughout the portfolio. It's not your average minimal portfolio. It takes some effort to achieve something like this. And she did it great. Yeah, you can you can all, uh, from the start, you can see the hand of, of the designer. You can see like her visual style is, you can see her favorite color, the fonts. This is very particular and it just shows a lot of her style. I really like these, this introduction. Yeah, I like it too. And then the table of contents is oh, just outstanding. Me, the best, the best. Yeah, I, I'm very fond of these curated unique table of contents that feels like it was designed to be here yeah and so sometimes some employers spend literally like 15 20 seconds scrolling really fast through your portfolio so the easier you can make their decision their lives the you know the, the better it is right so you, you don't want them to make a lot of effort to try to see okay so is this what type of project is this what what kind of architect is, is she but here it's very clear from the cover, the second spread and the third spread, um, her intentions, her visual style, and what she what she is going to show us in the portfolio. And differently from what you usually see, she has a pre-cover or a pre-project opening, like a full yeah. blitz stuff that, that you kind of take in, breathe, enjoy that, and then you go to the actual project. And it's also very minimal, right? I mean, the, the description is actually like four lines and that's it. You know? And well-spaced lines, which is... well-spaced, yeah. It's like trying to synthesize of uh, like a whole project that maybe sometimes you, we spend months in, in just four lines, which I think that's a really good exercise. I love this. I love this. I mean, come on. She has a full blade on one side and then the other has clear margins, but also a intersection within this this page. 
you can notice from the start that she's one of those people that pay attention to little graphic design details. You know, some some architects just go to with you know the basic uh, layout for organization, but you can see that she spent some time thinking about each little detail. You know, everything you do in the portfolio means something. And it's it's fun that she used the icon on every page. Yeah, that's quite clever, and it doesn't always work out. If she had too much stuff on the page. This could be a bit overwhelming, but since everything is so minimal and clean, you can definitely do something like this. Yeah, icons are tricky. I mean, they're tricky. Yeah, it's not like we're saying we sh you should you should uh, create an icon for all of your projects because, to be honest, it doesn't work on all of your projects and it doesn't work for everyone. So yeah, just in case, just just like in these specific cases where the icon kind of like adds to the portfolio, then if it's not like that, maybe it's not that necessary. Now here we are entering a new project. The and she's doing a, a full spread, full bleed, and then maintaining the same consistent project opening, another icon, and he goes on and on. Steven, do you notice that she has more or less the same color palette as the last portfolio, but in a, in a toned down version, in a the, more of the, a- Tomides? Tomides yeah, is, uh, it's just the, the blue and, and pink again, but it's the blue is more of a grayish, darker blue, and the paint like less is, saturated. It's faded. Yeah, it's, it's faded. <laughs> it's, it's so crazy. There are so many ways of uh, applying color to your portfolios. We saw Tomiris' portfolio, which was a very strong color with a strong character. And, uh, you know, Veronica's is a, a different use as well, but obviously it looks very cool too. Here she's applying the blue as if it was the black. So everything that was supposed to be black is blue, but it's yeah. this very faded dark blue that it's... It doesn't doesn't get too overwhelming. Now she finishes she finishes off with a project that doesn't follow any of that. Well, there's the pink here, oh, but uh, wow. dude, <laughs> that section, come on, come on. A perspective section like this says so much. And by adding the color on top as more of a a color uh, blend mode, you know, or multiply blend. Mode. I don't know what which blend mode does this, but it. It makes it multiply, even more interesting. Yeah. Multiply, right? All right, then she, she finishes off with the QR code. This does lead to Instagram, I guess. Let me check. So she's five out of 10 on the architecture journey. So 10 semesters. She's midway through and doing stuff like this. So it's she's in be... fifth semester and she's doing this? No, this is crazy. Dude, if I show you my fifth semester projects, you wouldn't look me in the eyes <laughs> again. <man. laughs> No, my mine's too. I mean, no pressure, guys. If you're on a, your fifth semester and you you don't have stuff like this, don't worry. You'll get there. <laughs> like th this is too good to be in the fifth semester. Honestly, congratulations, Veronica. You have yeah. a really good portfolio. An amazing portfolio. All right. So the fourth and last portfolio for this video is from Mohammed Noor Abu Hamu. Hopefully, I'm saying that correctly. And this is a master's application portfolio. Now we're going to okay. give a quick run through and then we'll take a look at the redesigns that we did for this portfolio. All right. So let's take a look at, let's, let's go through this, the CV and Taylor contents because yeah. they're, they're simple. They're just, they are there. There are a couple of things that we maybe would correct, but it's stuff that we already said multiple times. Yeah. All right. Project opening. The, what do you think about this page? I think the, the project introductions that he did was like the, the best thing that we had about this portfolio because it had a lot of balance between a main image versus a diagram versus a text in the, in the title, which if we see, you know, later on in the whole, in different spreads, we see that it doesn't follow the same uh, visual structure. So uh, I liked it. I like the whole, the, the, the size of the font, but here you guys can see like in the, in the next one, you can see that he actually just copied his presentation, like his presentation board and he just dragged it in. Yeah. I think it doesn't have anything to do with the design of the portfolio, you know? This one the same way. Yeah, overall, he has a lot of strong drawings and images, but it's just everything is squished together and it's, it literally feels like his presentation boards added to a, a portfolio, which might be, right? It, which is all right if you don't have time to make a portfolio, but if we're talking about creating a unique portfolio, curating something that will represent your style, your identity, to maybe be hired in a job position that you so wanted. This is just comments that we would add, you know? It's not that this is wrong. It's just or take our opinions on, or on this. Yeah, and like this project introduction, I think is super, super cool. But 
uh, again, we don't see it reflected in the next spreads. You know, it's, it's a different design. Just like a quick comment that I, w- I would add, I would do to this spread, for example, I don't know if I would add this drawing on the background here with white yeah. lines. I don't see adding any value to the whole spread, more of noise. Yeah, I would just leave it black. Yeah, maybe. or even do a lighter gray so that not to weigh it down, like contrast too much with the with the colored parts. Or honestly, yeah. just leave it yeah. white and add a bit of the that pattern he had at the beginning. Yeah. That would create the contrast he, he so wanted. I would try to avoid all of this text being overlapped and you know, terminal yeah, and building. Text, and to be honest. The, the hand, I kind of like it. It's interesting. But then the hand competing with the black building on the background with the yeah. colored one, like I would keep the yellow, the hand, all of it, but then make everything else subtle and Much more almost subtle. like, I yeah. Agree. But the drawings are so good. I mean, yeah, they're so good, but there's so many. I mean, uh, for, for each project, you have a ton of drawings. If you reduce your drawings to, you know, by half and just made them bigger and just focus on one drawing, it would still be a good portfolio. Yeah. And if anyone wanted to see much more of the project, you could show them later in the process of the interview process. You could show them more of your project, but you don't necessarily have to include all of the information of all of the projects you have ever worked on in your whole life. I mean, it's not necessary. Well, let's take a look at the redesigns, shall we? Yeah, for sure. Okay, so as I was I was mentioning, as we were talking about before, uh, you know, the cover is is pretty much its own basic design and it's really different from the other ones and when we see for example this first spread we see you know some some little mistakes like this uh, whole paragraph being centered uh this text of of uh of his name being way 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 up top almost very close to the margin and obviously mr clippy right there (laughs) And then we have the good spreads. This is this is more like a like an uh, analysis of the spreads, not much yeah. more like a redesign. No, so, but but it's so worth it. So I think you know the good thing about this these uh, introduction spreads is that there's a lot of regular white space that is organized and it leaves margins all around. Uh, in comparison to other types of spreads where there's not a lot of margins. And it's just very disorganized, and obviously it's not designed for the for the portfolio. So if if, if you just you yeah. know maybe erase the majority of these things, uh, you know. Yeah, I agree with you 100%, man. So let's see let, let let's see your your proposals. All right, so this is the the spread you also analyzed, and I also think this is a good spread compared to the whole portfolio. But there are a few things that I would maybe try to fix it or like change it a bit. So this is the before and this is the after. Minimal stuff, not too much, but it's mainly like going full blade with this, removing that text from the bottom, which was too small. Removing some of the black elements here, because I thought they were were drawing a bit of weight to the, the whole spread. And then making the text a little bit um, more organized, you know, uh, adding the project title location and professors and tutors, everything as a w- one block of information and then treating the paragraphs as, as actual paragraphs. So before and after. So much better, man. So much better. Very small details, but it just makes the difference, you know? Now that I imagine that, you know, a lot of architects are not as nitpicky as we are in terms of graphic design. So many of them could be like, you know, watching these videos saying like, hey, you know, those are very small details that don't really matter. But at the end of the day, if you start applying these little things that may seem dumb at first to your own portfolio, it can go a long way in terms of clarity and, you know, emphasizing much more on the content rather than, than, the, than where the content is, you know? Yeah. Now I did a second iteration of this page, just like maybe going one step further with the simplification, and I brought back the black shapes. So, uh, I like this one much more. Wow, this one is so much better. Yeah, but overall,
but if you so if you want to see the first episode of this season there will be a link in the description to watch that episode as well Super dope, come on.